Alright guys, what is going on? It is Joseph here, back for another video, and today I will be talking about the future of the MCU in Phase 4 and Phase 5, and I will be ranking all of the future MCU projects, basically just based off of which ones I'm the least excited for, all the way up to the most excited for, and um, let's get right into it. Now starting out in the last spot here, we have the Disney Plus TV show WandaVision, which I think is supposed to come out um, in the next few months. Now. For a lot of people, this show has come in last um, as far as anticipated anticipation for the future of the MCU, and I feel like there's a few reasons why. Just for one, you know, where can they really take this show? You know, uh, obviously we know basically what happens to Wanda and to Vision. Vision dies. Wanda lives on after Endgame and Infinity War. And not only that, but to me, just Vision and Wanda have not always been just the most interesting characters. Um, you know, they're cool and they're very powerful. And uh, they're fun to watch, you know, along with Iron Man, Captain America, and our other heroes. But to me, by themselves, you know, I don't really feel like there's that... They can't really go too far with the show, if that makes any sense. And, uh, you know, these two superheroes in particular are also very powerful. So it's like, you know, what's the threat going to be of the show? What's going to happen in the show? Um, what I am looking forward to, though, is, you know, again, even though this might be the last ranking on my list, I still am excited for it, and I'm going to watch it. And I still like Wanda, and I still like Vision. And it's going to be nice to see them together. Um, in their own little show where obviously in Infinity War they were together only just for, you know, a very limited amount of time um, and then Vision dies. So it'll be nice to see that and also I believe that this show directly will connect into um, the next Doctor Strange movie which is the Multiverse of Madness. So that's also neat. Um, but overall though, to me, it's nothing I'm really looking too much forward to, I guess. After WandaVision, we have the Marvel animated series called What If, which is also going to be on Disney+. Plus. Now, for me, the reason What If is so low is just because it's animated, and it does connect to the MCU because all of the events from the show are going to be about, you know, what if um, something happened to the MCU or something went different, you know? What if Loki picked up Thor's hammer or something like that, you know? Um, that kind of thing, which sounds neat, and I really like it. I like the idea, and I think it's going to be a fun show, and I'm definitely going to check it out at least. But, you know, for me, the MCU is really just mostly just the live action um, shows and movies, and that's really what I'm mostly into and interested in. So this one's animated, it sounds neat, but it's nothing that I'm really looking forward to. So, yeah. Now, after What If, we have the She-Hulk TV show, which again is another Disney Plus TV show um, coming, I think in 2022, I believe, but regardless of its release date, I'm not really that interested in the She-Hulk, I guess. It sounds like a neat idea, and I am interested to see how they uh, tackle the She-Hulk concept. Um, but ultimately, I've never just been that interested in She-Hulk as a character, and I just think that all the other projects are much more interesting, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. After She-Hulk, though, my next most anticipated Marvel project in the future is a Phase 5 movie, and this is the first movie on the list, and that is Captain Marvel 2. Um, now, a lot of people didn't really like the first Captain Marvel. Some people thought it was okay, some people just... It just wasn't what I feel like Disney wanted it to be. Um, you know, it was supposed to be a really big movie, and yeah, it was successful financially, but, you know, critically, and just as far as critical reception goes, it was okay, you know? Um, I personally kind of am in that range as well, where I thought it was just decent. There's some things I liked about it, you know? I liked the whole cosmos and just the 90s theme, and I really liked Nick Fury seeing Agent Coulson again, and I really loved Talos. Ben Mendelsohn is Talos. He was so much fun to watch, uh, and the scroll were neat. Uh, but just the most just of, of the Captain Marvel stuff, though, just didn't really work for me. You know, I thought she was kind of really dislikable, I guess, and she's not the most likable character. And she just wasn't that interesting either, you know. I felt she was kind of bland. It was a fun movie, but it wasn't anything special. So for me, Captain Marvel 2, you know, it's a sequel. It should be better. It should really expand on what was good about the first movie and, you know, take it to higher places, you know. It should be better, right? But again, to me, Captain Marvel, you know, Fun character, fun movie, but it wasn't anything that I really enjoyed too much. So am I looking that much forward to the sequel? Not so much. But I have heard rumors that this movie will actually be kind of like a Captain America Civil War movie. Where it's basically like in another another Avengers movie where a bunch of superheroes team up in one big appearance. Um, so that does sound neat. I do like that premise. But regardless, I'm excited for this movie, but I'm just excited for everything else more, I guess, if that makes sense. Next up, after Captain Marvel 2, though, we have the Loki TV show that is going to be on Disney+. Plus. Now, if there's one thing I really do like about this TV show or its premise, is it just it's just Loki. You know, I really love Loki. He's so much fun to watch on screen. I loved him in Thor Ragnarok. He unfortunately did pass in Infinity War, but I believe is supposed to be um, back 
uh, because of one of the loopholes in Endgame or something like that. He's he's back again. You know, the premise of him returning again is, you know, again, kind of wacky. It's like, how many times is he going to die and come back? But I just love Loki. You know, I think Tom Hiddleston really does a good job of playing him in the movies, and he's just so much fun to watch. But, you know, my only problem, I feel like, with this show is like, you know, how's it going to go, you know? Um, Loki's a guy that I feel like is really good in conjunction with all of the other characters, you know, and banter and just dialogue and such, but can he really hold a show on his own by himself, I think is a big question. You know, it's always fun to see him alongside Thor, but can Loki hold his own, I guess, if that makes sense. I think he can, you know, um, he's a lot of fun to watch, so I think they can do it, but I feel like if Loki was a little bit more fun to watch by himself, I guess, the show would be higher, but I do love Loki a lot, so I'm very much looking forward to watching this show. Now, after the Loki TV show, we have The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which, again, is another show that I am very much looking forward to. And obviously, it tackles, I guess, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier after Captain America basically retires. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how things pan out. You know, obviously, Sam has the shield. So, uh, you know, the show is called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and obviously it has part of the Captain America shield in the logo. So I guess Falcon will become Captain America or something like that. I'm not too sure. Um, but regardless, I feel like this is a good show because it tackles two characters like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier who have been big in their moments. You know, they've had some moments in the MCU, but they've never really been too explored. You know, they've always been kind of side characters and for them to have their own show where they're a duo together, I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And it's something that I think a lot of people will enjoy, including myself. So that's why it's above some of the other shows, but it's nothing that I'm very much looking forward to but i will admit i'm excited for it now after the falcon and the winter soldier i have the x-men movie which i believe is supposed to be part of phase five or the future beyond that even um personally i do like the x-men but you know i feel like it is going to be kind of weird to see them in the mcu after all of the movies that have been made about them by fox in their own universe um so i think they're gonna i think uh marvel studios are gonna do a great job with the franchise you know but uh, I've never really been a big X-Men fan myself, and, um, uh, you know, there already are plenty of good X-Men movies out there. You know, yes, they aren't in the MCU, and I think they're going to be great in the MCU, but, um, you know, there's been plenty of X-Men movies before that have been good, so this one might feel a, a little weird, and it's not one that I'm, like, really looking forward to, you know? There's been plenty of X-Men movies, you know? Some of the franchises and characters uh, and the other TV shows and movies on this list have never been done before, so to me, I'm much more... I'm looking forward to the newest stuff rather than stuff that's been done before, even if it will be the first time that the X-Men appear in the MCU. Regardless, though, I'm excited. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what to expect, you know, and I feel like an X-Men MCU movie is still a long ways away, but regardless, um, it's something that I think, if done the right way, is going to be awesome. So, I can't wait. After X-Men, though, I have the Nova film, which I'm not sure if it's confirmed or it's something that's even going to happen, but I have heard rumors that I think it is planned. Um, And... Honestly, I feel like there's not much for me to say. I mean, Nova's a character that a lot of people like, a lot of people want to see on screen, especially in the MCU. There's been no movies or anything really about him. Uh, You know, we know that Xandar is where the Nova Corps were, I guess, before they were all destroyed. Um, I don't really even know too much about Nova, but I know he sounds like a cool character. And I have to admit, I do like um, the more cosmos, I guess, like space-style approach to the newer MCU films where, you know, everything matters more, you know, it's not just Earth anymore, it's like a galaxy um, versus evil, you know, it's not just Earth versus evil and the Avengers, it's a whole galaxy versus evil, so I do like how the Marvel movies continue to expand into space and really just new and unique concepts and territory, so I'm excited for this movie, but I don't know too much about Nova, he sounds cool, but I'm not a guy who I guess has been really like waiting for this film to happen for a long time. After Nova, though, I have Ant-Man 3, which is a movie that I am pretty excited for, I guess you could say, and that's mainly because of the rumors I've heard. I've heard that, um, obviously, they're going to tackle more of the quantum realm, I guess, in this Ant-Man 3 movie, which I think I'm very interested in. And not only that, but I've heard that even the Fantastic Four could make a possible appearance in this movie, so that actually makes me quite much more excited for it, because the first two Ant-Man movies were good, but they really didn't, you know, they didn't break the box, you know, they were good. But they weren't anything special, in my opinion. Um, and I feel like this Ant-Man 3 movie really has the potential to really go above and beyond outside of the box and uh, take the Ant-Man franchise to new heights, I guess. So that's why I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, Ant-Man's just always fun to watch and is really enjoyable. Moving forward now, I have the Hawkeye Disney Plus TV show after Ant-Man 3. Now, if you, like, talk to me, I guess, or told me, you know, hey, Marvel's going to release a uh, Hawkeye TV show in the future, 
if you told me that like five years ago, I would have been, I would have yawned. You know, I would have been like, really, like really, no way. You know, Hawkeye is boring. He doesn't do too much. He's just kind of there. And that's the way things were for him early on in the MCU. He was kind of pushed to the side. He wasn't too interesting. He was cool, but, you know, his ability, his superpower, I guess, was just his great skill with a bow and arrow. And that's cool. But, you know, when you have the Hulk, Iron Man, and such, they're just much cooler. And not only that, but he just wasn't he wasn't the focus. You know, he wasn't really developed as a character. And then you move to the Infinity War and Endgame movies, and he's just so much more interesting and exciting and fun to watch. And, you know, he's always been a fun character, but he's never been anyone special, but I feel like in Endgame, he really took, he really took a big step forward, you know, in his character development, so that really makes me want to see this Hawkeye TV show, it makes me want to see more of Jeremy Renner, I think he's a great actor, I think he's a lot of fun to watch, and, uh, you know, I just want to see more of him, and I also heard there's, like, a Kate Bishop, who's, like, the Hawkeye, like, the future of Hawkeye, I guess, that's going to appear in this show, you know, where basically, I think, Jeremy Renner's going to hand down the mantle off to the next Hawkeye, which sounds neat, um, ultimately, though, I like Hawkeye a lot, and I feel like Endgame really made him much more likable and fun to watch, so that's why I'm excited for this show. Now, after Hawkeye, obviously, we have the Black Widow movie, which is set to come out in November this year. It's a movie that I'm very much looking forward to, mainly just because we haven't seen an MCU movie or film or just anything since um, Far From Home, which feels like a while ago. You know, um, MCU was pumping out films. It felt like almost every three months for the past few years. And it's been a while now, so to get a new MCU film, I'm, you know, I'm excited. You know, I'm ready. And not only that, but Black Widow, I feel like, has just deserves a movie. And, you know, I feel like what holds this film back is because um, how it's, I feel like it's kind of too late. You know, Black Widow probably should have had a movie a few years ago and, you know, wouldn't have been, would it have, would have been successful, I guess, as it would be now. Maybe not. But Black Widow's still a cool character. And, uh, you know, she's going to be fun to watch in this movie. And I'm also really looking forward to seeing the Taskmaster in this movie. He's one of my favorite Marvel villains of all time. So that really uh, makes me want to see this movie more. If it was anyone else, I probably would have had this movie a lot lower. But I hope the Taskmaster is going to be really fun to watch in the Black Widow movie. Anyways, though, I feel like Black Widow just deserves a movie. You know, she's been fun to watch. And uh, it's about time, you know. But this movie can only go so far, which is why it's lower on the list than I feel like some people might think it should have been. Because you know what happens to Black Widow, so this movie isn't very consequential. It's a prequel. Sounds neat. Nothing too special, though. After the Black Widow movie, though, we have the Miss Marvel Disney Plus TV show. Now, personally, I don't really know anything about Miss Marvel, if I'm being honest with you. I think she has, like, the ability to, like, stretch out or something like that. Or, like, she's, like, bendy. I don't know, honestly. But to me, in, when it comes to the MCU, new is always good. I mean, just look at Guardians of the Galaxy and Black Panther. Those two movies really kind of came out of nowhere, especially Guardians of the Galaxy, you know? Um, you know, it wasn't an Iron Man newbie, it wasn't Incredible Hulk, it wasn't Captain America, it wasn't the Avengers. These were two kind of more obscure um, groups of heroes, I guess, that really were very successful on screen. And to me, I think that's what the MCU can do best sometimes, you know. They can bring some guys who are really obscure and just kind of out of nowhere, like literally Groot, a talking tree, and make them um, fan favorite um, characters and movies. And that's what I'm looking forward to in this Miss Marvel TV show. Yeah, it's a TV show, it's not a movie. But still, you know, I think that Miss Marvel is a little bit more interesting than any of the other TV show characters, and obviously she's going to be brand new. So I'm excited to see where they go with the show, and, uh, you know, we'll just have to see how things go. Now, after Miss Marvel, we have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is another movie that's going to be kind of outside of the box and kind of bring a new franchise into the MCU that nobody's really heard of, including myself. I don't know anything about Shang-Chi. Um... I know it's about martial arts, and that sounds awesome, because we've never really had an MCU movie like that. Um, and not only that, but I believe it's supposed to have a real Mandarin, which I think is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, obviously, Iron Man 3 had the fake Mandarin. He was intimidating and scary at first, but obviously he's just an actor um, named Trevor, and that's it. You know, a little bit of a disappointment there for, I feel like, a lot of people, uh, myself included. Well, this movie's supposed to be about the real Mandarin. It's supposed to be about another kind of obscure, weird character that you're like, you know, who is this guy? And I feel like the MCU is going to do a great job with this character. And it just sounds interesting. It sounds like a fun movie. Um, I'm excited for it. And, you know, it's coming out in the next couple of years, I believe. So, can't wait. And once again, just like Shang-Chi and Miss Marvel before that, we have another more obscure character in Moon Knight who's getting his own Disney Plus TV show um, in the near future. I don't really know too much about Moon Knight, again, if I'm being honest. I like Marvel movies. I like Marvel comics. I don't really read a lot of comics. I've seen pretty much every movie. The only movie I haven't seen is The Incredible Hulk. Um, but I'm still a fan of Marvel, and I really like what they do, and I think that Moon Knight's going to be a really cool character. I did some reading about him, so I know a little bit more about him now. 
but uh, he just looks cool, he sounds cool, and he's just basically like a Marvel Batman, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But still, I think that the whole premise of Moon Knight and just this concept and character design are really cool. And I think that, you know, yeah, it's not a movie, but still in the TV show, I think that they could really take him places and uh, hopefully get him featured in his own movie or in just normal MCU movies one day. I'm excited, though. After Moon Knight, though, we have a franchise that is much more familiar to most people, and that is the Fantastic Four. Everyone knows who the Fantastic Four is, and everyone also knows that pretty much every Fantastic Four movie that has been released is trash. Um, I remember watching the Fantastic Four movie from 2015 in theaters. Um, you know, I didn't exactly have high hopes, you know, and I wasn't really super excited for it, but I thought, you know, maybe this might be a cool movie, um, you know. And it just ended up really being boring and going nowhere, and Doctor Doom dies after, like, being Doctor Doom for only 15 minutes on screen. So it was just really just a bummer, you know, it just a bummed out movie. You know, I just, did, just didn't go anywhere. It was nothing. <laughs> But with the MCU, they usually release good films, so hopefully this time a good Fantastic Four movie will be released, and I have faith that they will do it. Um, and I'm excited, because who wouldn't want to see a good Fantastic Four movie, maybe even featuring Doctor Doom? That would be awesome. I'm excited. Anyways, after Fantastic Four, I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is a movie that I feel like from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and on and the rest of this video, these are all the movies that are like Tier 1 movies that I am extremely excited for and very much anticipating for the future. Um, they're a step ahead of every other movie. You know, these are movies that I think are going to be great and I'm very, very much excited for. And Guardians of the Gal Galaxy Volume 3 is part of this group of movies. And, you know, I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. I love the characters. Um, they're so much fun to watch. And I really like how Thor is going to be part of the team now. I can't wait to see that. Um, you know, I don't know too much else about this movie or just the potential of it. But it would be higher, you know. I just didn't really like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 as much as I thought I would. I really like the first one. The first one's a great movie. Volume 2 isn't terrible or bad. It's just not what the first one was, in my opinion. Um, you know, it had some things that some people I feel like can agree on just weren't as good as the first movie. Um, and just, I don't know, I just didn't like it as much as the first one. So the direction they took the franchise to me kind of went down, in my opinion. So I am excited for this one, but I'm also wary that, you know, maybe it might not be all that great. You know, I don't want to hype it up too much, which is why I guess it's not higher on the list, but I'm still looking forward to it. Moving on past Guardians of the Galaxy, we have Blade, which is a movie that I feel like a lot of people are really looking forward to seeing being brought into the MCU. I've never seen a Blade movie ever. I haven't seen any of the first movie, first three movies, part of like the Trinity or whatever. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about them. I've heard they're good. You know, I've heard at least a lot of really good things about the first two. I haven't heard as much positive things about the third one. But I've always heard that they're really fun to watch. And, um, you know, this movie, obviously, I don't think it's going to be rated R because it's coming to the MCU. Either way, though, I'm still excited to see, I guess, some horror aspects um, of film brought into the MCU. Not only that, but I've just heard a lot of good things about the Blade franchise in the past. And I think it's a movie that I feel like a lot of people are looking very much forward to. Um, and myself included. You know, I have to watch the first Blade movies before I watch this one. But I'm still excited, even though I don't really know too much about Blade. He just seems like a cool character. And, you know, in the MCU, you know, I think that that pair of the MCU and Blade is going to be something that's going to be really awesome. Anyways, after Blade, we have a movie in Black Panther 2 that I am very much looking forward to. I really liked the first movie. I thought the first movie was great. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. I love the characters. It was a good film, and I really liked it. Um, you know, I feel like if there's anything that I'm not looking forward to in this film, it's like, where can they go next? You know, the first movie was really good, and not only that, but Wakanda and just the culture of Wakanda was featured heavily in Avengers Endgame, or Infinity War especially, you know, obviously Wakanda got attacked by Thanos' forces, so it's like, you know, what's going to happen next, you know, what's the next threat for Wakanda, who's the next villain, you know, are you going to get a villain better than Thanos, or Killmonger to attack Wakanda, um, you know, where can they go next, you know, because I feel like it'd be hard to create something that can top what they've already done with Wakanda and Black Panther and just the character and legacy of him, so, you know, where can they go next, that's my biggest question for this movie, but I'm still very excited for it. I really like the first one, you know. I hope this one doesn't let a lot of us down. Um, you know, there's a lot of hype around it. And I don't want it to be kind of, for me, like another Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 where everyone was looking forward to it. And just for me, at least, it just didn't pan out the way I feel like I wanted it to. So I don't want this movie to be that movie for me again. But I'm, I have high hopes for it, and I think it's going to be great. Next up, though, we have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now... When I first watched the original Doctor Strange, I actually only watched like 48, 45 to 48 minutes of it, and I turned off the TV. You know, I was just bored. I just didn't really want to watch it. I thought the beginning was a little slow, 
recently I watched the complete movie for the first time and I liked it a lot more than I remember it being, you know? I watched it a while ago, so I thought it was boring, but watching it now, I feel like I've appreciated it more and it's a good movie, it is. It's a bit cookie cutter of an origin story, um, but it's a good movie. And this movie just sounds much more interesting and just complex and fun, you know? There's a multiverse, they're gonna really explore it in this and to me that's awesome, you know? Just a generic Doctor Strange 2 movie where he faces some villain sounds not that interesting to me, but the fact that he's going into the multiverse, you know, it's going to have some horror aspects of it. It's going to be crazy, kind of out there. That's what really gets me excited for this movie, and that's why it is so high on this list. Next up, we have another franchise that I just don't really know anything about, and that is The Eternals. Don't know anything about the source material. It sounds cool, though. Um, Angelina Jolie is playing one of the characters, and so is Kumal Nanjiani, I believe. And that just gets me excited, you know, they have a great cast for this movie, it sounds interesting, it sounds out there, kind of like another just Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's like, you know, you don't really know who they are, but you know they're going to love them, you know? Because um, so the MCU just does that, they bring people that and characters out of nowhere, and they make them, put them into the spotlight, and they just have done really well with that, um, when it comes to weird, obscure characters, and I feel like this is going to be the same case for the Eternals, you know? I'm excited to see what it's like, it sounds crazy, you know, about these Eternals who are just these super powerful beings that, you know, are just absolutely ridiculously overpowered, so I'm, I don't know what to expect, honestly, but I'm excited, you know, that's it, I'm excited. Anyways, after the Eternals, we have another kind of cosmos space type movie in Thor, Love and Thunder, Thor 4, I really like Thor Ragnarok, so Thor 4, I'm excited, it's gonna be directed by Taika Waititi again, and, uh, I just really love the direction they went with Thor. Some people don't like it as much. Some people prefer kind of a traditional Norse mythology type Thor. And for me, you know, I can understand why people want more tradition, I guess, and they kind of everything, I guess, the characters be in their classic roots. But the MCU's changed so much, you know. Thor needed to change, you know. The first two movies of Thor just weren't very good, and he was just so boring and bland. Thor Ragnarok really changed him, and he became so much more fun to watch. And that he's my favorite MCU character. I love Thor. I love Chris Hemsworth. Um, I think he just his turn in Thor Ragnarok made him so much more interesting. You know, if he doesn't have that turn, to me, he's one of the worst MCU characters. But because of his new life and identity, he just is so much more fun. And I really I already love the title card of this movie. I love the art and just the aesthetic and vibes of the Ragnarok movie. And this movie, I already love it. Some people have this movie ranked low because of, I believe there's rumor that Jane Foster is supposed to become the next Thor, basically, and wield the hammer. I mean... I'm personally, I guess, not really looking too much forward to that. I mean, Jane Foster, to me, you know, seems like a nice... I mean, she's a fine character, I guess. She doesn't really do too much. Um, she's played by Natalie Portman, who's a good actress. But, you know, she's not really a character that's always been like, oh, I can't wait to see Jane Foster, you know, lift the hammer where it's with Captain America and Endgame's like, oh, wow, he finally did it. He's worthy. With her, not so much, you know. And I feel like it kind of takes away the uniqueness and kind of special moment when you lift the hammer, you know, if everyone gets to lift the hammer and everyone gets a superpower, you know, superpowers aren't special, you know what I mean, so her getting a superpower to me isn't something I'm really looking too much forward to, I think it's going to be fine though, I'm just here to watch Thor, because I love Thor, and finally though, taking the cake for the number one spot in terms of the Marvel project or movie or TV show or whatever that I am most looking forward to in the future is Spider-Man 3, um, I've always been a huge Spider-Man fan. I love Spider-Man. I love Venom. I love the Spider-Verse. I just love the characters, the atmosphere, just everything about the franchise. And, um, you know, there's been tons and tons of Spider-Man movies in the past. You have the original trilogy, I guess, the two Amazing Spider-Mans, and you had the two MCU films. I've enjoyed the two MCU films, but I feel like they're just kind of scratching the surface, you know? First one was cute. It was fun. Uh, had a nice villain. The second one was also fun. You know, they're cute movies. But I feel like this Spider-Man 3 movie really has the potential to really go out there and really set itself apart from all the other movies. You know, this is the ultimate kind of culmination of Spider-Man that I feel like people have been waiting for. And I'm just excited to see it. You know, I'm excited to see it. Um, you know, there's been rumors about this show or this movie. It could be about the Sinister Six. It could be about Oscorp and the Green Goblin. Who knows? Regardless, though, I love Spider-Man and uh, nothing's going to change that for me. So I am very excited for this movie. Anyways, y'all, that's it today. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and uh, just let me know what y'all's rankings are in the comics. The comics, bro. I just say comics. Comments below. Thank you for watching, and have an amazing day.